So now when we put everything like this together, and then we come to the 1924 expedition, uh, but he was obsessed. He, 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 and there was no way I think uh, he was prepared to come back without the summit. After Teddy Norton and Howard Somerville's failed attempt at making the summit of Everest via the Great Couloir, Norton was about to get a big surprise from George Mallory who had made other plans for another summit attempt with Sandy Irvin. There were some key factors to it that no one knew about at the time. Mallory had a surprise for Norton, and what a surprise it was. It was his radical plan to make it to the summit of Mount Everest. Yeah, kind of a strange place to do an intro to a video. I'm on Mount Kerrigan in the White Mountains of New Hampshire on a gorgeous hike in late October, and it's absolutely stellar. And the summit is near, so close, oh, so close. But that last four tenths of a mile makes all the difference, doesn't it? That's exactly what Mallory was thinking when he took Irvin with him for their final summit attempt on that fateful day on the 8th of June in 1924. What Norton didn't know was that Mallory had some other plans in store. Not only was he gonna take an extra oxygen canister, but, well, it was the route, too, that he was about to take. Stay tuned for more. And in the meantime, click that subscribe button. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to have a couple more videos that are going to be suggested to you by YouTube that you're going to want to see. On June 6th, 1924, George Mallory and Andrew Irvin departed from Camp 4 on the North Coal of Mount Everest. Five days previously, Mallory had unsuccessfully made an attempt at the summit with team member Jeffrey Bruce. It was a huge disappointment for Mallory, this being his third expedition to Mount Everest in four years, but he was not done. Two days before that, on the 4th of June, Edward Teddy Norton and Howard Somerville departed from Camp 6 at 6.40 a.m. for the second British attempt at the summit. A thermos of tea inside Norton's sleeping bag overnight leaked, soaking Norton's bag, delaying their departure. And it was much later than they had planned. And good things come in funny packages because that may have been the best luck of their lives. If they had kept their schedule, they could have encountered the same decision that befell Mallory and Irvin a couple of days later, the all-important time of when to turn around. Today, my guest is going to lay out a solid reason why some believe that Mallory and Irvin took the route on the ridge using, yes, the second step. Now, admittedly, the Norton Kuwar seems an obvious choice, but when you break it all down, the idea of the second step becomes very clear. My short interview with Everest researcher A.J. Dandekar from India enlightened me to the details that are worth consideration. A.J. Dandekar is a historian and a faculty member at the Shiv Nadar University in Delhi. He wrote a fascinating series of articles with his friend and Everest researcher Philip Summers, in particular one called The Mallory and Irvin Mystery, The Radical Plan to Reach Everest's Summit. They lay out three very interesting factors that you should consider. The plan entitled taking an alternative route, which required the climbers to pack additional oxygen cylinders and sleeping bags to give them a longer turnaround time. Anyone interested in this story, read the articles written by AJ and Philip Summers because this video is just a synopsis, not a fully detailed exegesis of an argument. Okay, quick reset. The route now known as the Norton Kuwar is the no-brainer for modern-day mystery sleuths. But, AJ argues, the previous attempts had failed, and quite resoundingly. All the British expeditions took the Norton route, barring Mallory and Irvin. Uh, all of them turned back roughly at the same point where Norton turns back. And after the first two failed attempts, Mallory surprised everyone that he was going again for the summit with Sandy Irvin and with oxygen. A.J. Dandekar maintains that the surprise revelation is proof enough that no matter what was written or implied leading up to the expedition, and up until that very day of their expedition, no one can say that, that just because Mallory had spoken about, or it was assumed that the Great Kuwar was going to be the chosen route, that they actually went that way. 
And let's be clear, Norton didn't almost make the summit. He moved very slowly and not far beyond Howard Somerville's stopping point. Because of the obstacles and difficulties encountered in the Kuwar, it very possibly gave Mallory cause to reconsider the route that he and Irvin would attempt. Here's a further delving into the difficulty that Norton encountered in Norton's own words, which is important to consider as something he surely would have shared with Mallory when they met that final time before Mallory and Irvin made their way up to the high camp. Norton describes the terrain in the Great Kuwar like this. From about the place where I met with these buttresses coming down from the second step, the going became a great deal worse. The slope was very steep below me. The foothold ledges narrowed to a few inches in width. And as I approached the shelter of the big Great Kuwar, there was a lot of powdery snow which concealed the precarious footholds. I had twice to retrace my steps and follow a different band of strata. The Kuwar itself was filled with powdery snow into which I sank to the knee or even to the waist and which was yet not of a consistency to support me in the event of a slip. Beyond the Kuwar, the going got steadily worse. I found myself stepping from tile to tile of rock, as it were, each sloping smoothly and steeply downwards. I began to feel that I was too much dependent on the mere friction of a boot nail on the slabs. It was not exactly difficult going, but it was a dangerous place for a single unroped climber, as one slip would have sent me, in all probability, to the bottom of the mountain. So the first part of the radical plan laid out by A.J. Dandekar and Philip Summers is Mallory and Irvin first were with oxygen and that they surmised that it was with five oxygen cylinders. The second step of the radical plan that A.J. and Philip Summers lay out is that they discovered several things of note and one of them is the idea of extra sleeping bags that came up to Camp 6. And when Odell returned to Camp 6, those sleeping bags were not there which means they were with Mallory and Irvin on June 8th. Once you have a sleeping bag, then your turnaround time becomes open. It is perhaps also a reasonable guess that they took the sleeping bags. One or two is the question. And the, and the experience came from the earlier, uh, I suppose the only one that came closer that is not until Samuel. The Samuel had to stay back out in the open and but that did give them a turnaround time which is more uh, than what a normal turnaround time would have been that also is a part of that radical plan question is and aj dandekar speculates which route did they take he believes the second step is the third critical piece in their radical plan to make the summit third of course is the route i mean you know uh, going up the skyline, but where? <laughs> so, I mean, there I suppose Odell's first lines that he writes, his first impressions that, you know, saw M and I nearing the base of the final pyramid. Uh, so base of the final pyramid has to be either the third step, certainly above the second step. I think, you know, if you put all this form together, uh, then, you know, there are summit possibilities. I think that in the tent that night, as you're suggesting, when Norton and Mallory had that conversation, Mallory quizzed him hard. What happened? Tell me about it. What's the viability of the Norton Kuwar? And in that conversation, it doesn't matter how many notes or how much intention Mallory had written in the years leading up to it that he intended to take this route. Everything changed on that night and even Norton was surprised. You believe that, and let me just recount this, that the the fact that they brought at least one extra sleeping bag, uh, probably, possibly two, and very likely the extra oxygen cylinder gave them that opportunity to go to the second step, kind of toil there, spend a little extra time, and then send one man off to the summit and back leaving at least the other one to have one of the sleeping bags. Is that, did I get that right? Absolutely right, absolutely. Yeah. So this bit that Mallory could not have climbed the second step. It was beyond his technical pride. I, I don't, I find it a bit too far-fetched actually. I, I do feel that uh, between the two of them, 
that enough motivation and uh, that enough skills uh, to overcome that obstacle if the chinese could do it in 1960 uh, uh, if they could do it malley has done these kind of climbs earlier in his life somewhere else in 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 his own country so uh, so and uh, he he was known to be a uh, a fabulous rock climber as was uh, his uh, i think they reached there earlier they prepared one thing that i found quite intriguing is that that rope that you all found uh, that got cut twice right that rope was cut twice now if it was cut twice uh, second time of course when the fall must have happened you know it got but the first cut why would they cut it unless they wanted to use a bit of it uh, to create some kind of a loop uh, uh, to use for the second step uh, we we need to look at uh, you know that bit uh, as to how come the rope was cut twice mm. because rope was with mallory uh, and uh, you know uh, which would suggest that they were tied they were together almost till the end uh, um aj so the one thing that I I just wanted to ask you is you is is the Odell's sighting and you place them over the second step and uh can you my just My heart Tom says third step my head would say certainly second step because Mallory had the necessary skills plus the longer turnaround time offered by a sleeping bag and oxygen he believes that the second step was a very viable option Now this is just one man's thinking on the fateful day on Mount Everest in June of 1924. No one really knows what happened. It's a mystery that brings us all closer together through our common interest in the mystery of the fate of Mallory and Irvin. In just a minute, YouTube is going to suggest a video that they think will interest you most, and there will also be a playlist about the mystery of Mallory and Irvin. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. click like and subscribe and share it with others that might be interested in the meantime keep your thoughts and energy pure and filled with light think good thoughts do a kind gesture to a fellow human being today stay safe peace out